Hi, in today's demo, we're going to be scaling delivery of an application to PKS multi clusters with Concourse and Spinnaker. Our application is called Pet Clinic. It's a Spring Boot app built using Maven. Uh, the code is on a public GitHub repository, uh, and we're using the Concourse CI pipeline tool to both do the spring build and testing, as well as creating a Docker image uh, for our application. After that, we upload it to our Harbor uh, container registry that includes security validation, checking for any CVEs and, and the like. Uh, and then our Spinnaker continuous deployment tool will monitor for new versions of the apps and deploy them appropriately. If it's uh, marked as a dev instance, it'll get deployed to our dev cluster uh, as an ephemeral uh, testing version. And if it's marked with a version, it's getting deployed to our prod cluster, uh, which is highly available and has a backing uh, MySQL database for uh, permanent data. In this environment, uh, all of these tools are running on uh, one PKS a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and then we also have a dev cluster and a separate prod cluster. So these are three clusters all running, uh, in this case, in GCP, but they could be running wherever. And they don't even all have to be running in the same environment. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like. So if we do a uh, PKS cluster list, we can see uh, you know we have these three clusters. Cluster one is that one that's running all the tools that I mentioned. And then we have a uh, dev cluster and a prod cluster. So here's the code in our uh, public GitHub org. Uh, has all of the uh, spring code in it. So if we go and take a look, uh, we'll drill down into uh, some of the code in here and find something that we can change you know, pretty easily uh, for this demo. So uh, this is our veterinary list. So if we go and look at the dev version of the app, it's running at dash dev. Um, and if we click on the veterinarians tab, we can see it says veterinarians and has a list of veterinarians. Um, and in the in the code, that's uh, you know that's right where that is listed right there. You can see on line eight. So what we're going to do is uh, live edit this file. Obviously, normally you wouldn't be uh, editing this live in GitHub on the master branch, but for a demo here, it makes sense. So we're going to put uh, something in there in KubeCon 19. Uh, hit commit, and uh, now that code has uh, has been committed to the, the repository. And uh, while that's doing that, what we're going to do is we're also going to uh, find an owner and we're going to make some changes uh, to that owner. So in this case, we're, we're going to take Betty and we're going to change her last name from Davis to Smith. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is so we can see uh, you know, when the dev version updates because it's ephemeral, we should lose this data. So we can see Betty Smith there. Um, so once this app deploys uh, the new dev version, we won't be able to see, you know, we won't be able to see that change. It should revert. So we go to Comcourse, we can see that that trigger to build uh, and what it's doing here. Uh, we'll speed this up a little bit, but it's um, grabbing and checking out the version, including that commit. It's doing all of the um, you know testing on the Java side, Spring side, Maven. Uh, you can see right now it's running through all the tests. And uh, as long as everything passes, that we you know we we didn't cause any errors in our code, uh, we'll be we'll have a finished uh, Java jar file that we can use uh, to run the application. So this is just about done. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do uh, once this is finished is build the Docker image run. So we see the build is successful. So the Docker plugin will now um, take that code, that jar file, and um, and put it into our Docker image. We can see it did there. Now it's uploading it to our Harbor registry and it's done. And the last step, it actually download, re-downloads it immediately to make sure that the proper version with the matching uh, hashes is, is uploaded. So we can see we have green successfully uploaded. If we refresh here, uh, what we'll see is our latest version was updated. Um, you can see the time in the corner versus that creation time. Uh, so we have our latest version. Uh, if we go into our uh, Spinnaker interface, what we see here is our development environment was triggered, deployed to development by that uh, Docker registry update. So we can see Spring Pet Clinic latest. Uh, if we look what's in that in that uh, pipeline, it's pretty basic. Um, but what it's doing is it's deploying to our um, test environment, and we have it set to red black, which means it'll uh, start up the new version and then uh, disable the old version. So we can see it uh, successfully completed. If we take a look at our dev environment, um, we have you know our production version, our new production version we just deployed, uh, and then the older versions. 
um, behind it. So now if we go back to our, our dev environment and we uh, and we click on our veterinarians tab, we'll see there's that new change to the code that we made. And then also if we look for our owners, we'll see that that data was not saved. So when we updated Betty Davis to Betty Smith, that was lost because it is um, you know, ephemeral in our development environment. Now, if we liked that change, uh, if we thought that made a lot of sense and we wanted to uh, deploy that change into production, uh, what we want to do is create a release. So um, we can see that's what the most latest release was, 0.16. So we'll go in here and we'll create a new version, 0.17, and we'll publish it. So now our second build pipeline in, in Concourse uh, watches for these releases um, to uh, to deploy to production. So you can see we had that build dev and build prod. Build prod is based off only git releases. Uh, so now we create a release. Uh, it's going to kick off that build. Uh, another thing we do a little differently in the in the pipeline itself is we don't build off of the commit. We actually will pull down the the tarball of the of the source code. So if we go and take a look right now at the prod environment. Veterinarians, it's you know it's it's the previous version as we've seen, uh, nothing's changed there. And uh, and what we'll do here is we'll go in and we'll modify uh, an owner because this data is permanent. So even as we update the app, the backing data is persistent. So what we're going to do here is uh, give give Betty Davis a new um, a new pet uh, called Kukan. That's a hamster. And let's do lizard instead. We add that pet. Now we see that pet down there at the bottom. Uh, so now she has two pets, and the veterinary tab, veterinarian tab still has the old one. So now if we see here, the, the prod build is kicked off. Uh, all these tests are, uh, are the same. It just starts from a different place here. You can see there's some, the first step is actually instead of a git clone, it's an untarring of the, of the source files. And then now it's uh, going through all the spring tests as we did before. We can see there isn't a version in the Harbor registry yet for uh, 0.1.7. So once these tests finish up here, uh, then this will pretty much be the same process as dev with the only differences because we have a, a version number 0.1.7. We're also gonna tag the Docker image with 0.1.7 when we upload it. So we'll see the same thing here. Uh, Docker image is, is uploading. And if you look uh, down at the, uh, what's the difference in the production pipeline, um, we have, um, three replicas instead of one because it's production plus we have extra configuration information so it knows how to talk to the MySQL database. Uh, we still have that same red black management so start the new version and then disable the old version um, and it's set to send client requests to the new pod. So once this deploys it'll be available immediately but we can also uh, roll back to the previous version because we haven't turned those pods off. We're going to leave them running. We're just going to remove any any traffic from them. So we see here it's both uploaded it and now it's re-downloading it to make sure it's the right one and it's tagged uh, 017. So if we go to uh, Harbor and we refresh there, we'll see we have a new version right there, 017. And with the scanning is completed with no vulnerabilities. So our, uh, our uh, application is secure. If there was a CVE or a problem with uh, you know, a Spring Boot version or something like that, we would see that here. Uh, we can see all those that scanning information. So if we, we go to the app, we'll see that kicked off the deploy to production for 017. So it's uh, running through the deploy right now. It's giving us all the, you know, Spinnaker's giving us all the details on this individual deploy. We can see that it's deploying the manifest for the new versions, uh, and then it's going to disable the previous ones. Um, and at that point in time, our, our new version will be live. So we can see both succeeded. If we go over to our clusters, we can see V36 is our new version. Um, and if we see they're, they're signed through our, we're using um, Kubernetes ingress to expose them. So we have them for both dev and prod. Uh, and that's where you get this dash dev and dash prod host names. Um, you can see that we also, in this case, have a replica set. Uh, we're running a MySQL server for the backing service. So um, if we go into our uh, cluster view here, we'll see there's that new version 37 showed up and 36 got uh, disabled. So it's still running, but but disabled. So we can we can run from it. So we go to our production um, and, and take a look. First thing, veterinarians on our prod version. Uh, we now have that new text that we pushed to production. So 0.1.7 includes that. If we look up our owners and look at Betty Davis, we'll see, look, her data changes are still there. So this is our production data with uh, persistent data on the back end. 
So we, we have the new version and you can see the difference between the two environments. So again, this is what the, uh, what the environment looks like. We're starting with Git. Concourse is doing our continuous integration, testing, and building. Harbor is uh, holding our container images and, and scanning them for security issues. And then we're using Spinnaker to deploy to multiple environments, you know, based on different pipelines, based on different scenarios. In this case, if it's if it's a dev or or prod copy, and in the, and as I mentioned before, these are all production uh, Kubernetes instances.